the New York Knicks. We are the New York Knicks. We are the New York Knicks. Say go New York, go New York, go. Go New York, go New York, go. Say go New York, go New York, go. Go New York, go New York, go. What's up, you two? Welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan, the Nick fan, your host, and let's get right into it. But before we get into it, I want you to do me one small favor. I want you to hit that like button. I definitely want you to subscribe, leave a comment. You want to know when the next video is going to drop, hit the notification bell. Well, the New York Knicks is on a six-game winning streak, and can we make it seven? And I think, yes, we're going into Indiana Pacers hometown on a road game. So far, the Knicks are a, a five-game road tr- winning road trip. On a five-game winning streak road, um, we have the longest winning streak in the East right now. Maybe the NBA. I'm not too sure, and I didn't check, but the New York Knicks is looking really good. And I just want to point out one thing. Uh, to the weeks leading up to this excitement, to this, to the way the New York Knicks is playing, a lot of people had the Knicks dead in water. Um, a lot of people still talking about should the New York Knicks make a trade, and I don't think so. I think the New York Knicks to stay packed. I mean, I don't even think the New York Knicks should get rid of Cam Reddish. Hold on to Cam Reddish, especially Cam Reddish, especially... Um, Derek Rose, these are two plays I think the New York Knicks is going to need. And need I say, I'm on the fence with Evan Foyer, but right now, honestly, the way the team is playing, I don't think the Knicks should make any moves. The chemistry is there. And if one of our players was to go down, we have a player that would step in that know the system. Matter of fact, not only know the system, know the guys, everything would be like, it wouldn't be no adjustment period. Uh, this is where everybody talking about making trades, and, that, and this is why I'm I'm against the trades right now because I think that if we were to start making trades, it would throw the chemistry off of the New York Knicks, the team, all together. So right now, I just think the Knicks should just stay put. Um, a lot of people said this roster was flawed. I doubt it. Uh, the Tibbs is starting to play the young guys more, and I'm going I'm to have a video on that later on the day just about the young guys. Um, this is something I'm going to talk about later in this this. This video, a matchup I would like to see, so I don't, and I want y'all to hit me in the comment section and tell me y'all think that's a good matchup. But before I get to that, I just want to talk a little bit more about Indiana Pacers. But let me backtrack t- to that Chicago game. Yes, it was an impressive win, but what worried me about them two victories against Chicago, and I like I said, this is not a flawed, flawed r- roster like so many people have complained about, is that the um, Chicago doesn't play as a team. They have no team chemistry. Uh, there was rumors. There's actually been video of players actually arguing and going up against one another. So this, you know, I don't want to take nothing away from the, the win from the New York Knicks, but that team is in some type of turmoil. They're mixing, miss, missing their starting point guard. Um, I mean, they do have three good players. I mean, the Rosen and Levine or Levine. And Vukicic, them are three very good three offensive player, but none of them are known for their defense. So that team is going to be, I don't know. I don't know. But let's get back to the New York Knicks and how we've been doing on this winning streak. Um, I'm not going to say I'm surprised. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I knew it would come sooner or later. The Knicks would start playing better basketball because the, my biggest problem with the team was the defense. And now that the now and I know some of y'all might say, "Oh, we're still playing the same defense." No, we're not. He changed. He put him some tweaks in the defense. And as you can watch, if you watch the game, the guys is not running double teaming, running from over here, all the way over here to play defense. So I like what he did. He's playing a man to man, and only and a little bit switching. Um, it's much better than all that trapping and double teaming. And I'm mean, not be hearing Clyde talking. And I respect you, Clyde. I respect you, Clyde Frazier. Clyde be calling for the double team. And every time Clyde calls for the double team, we get hit with a three. Clyde, um, I don't mean no disrespect. I love your game when you play, but you are outdated. Uh, the double team in, double team is not going to work in the NBA today because too many players are, what can I say, they hone their skills. They can shoot the ball way better than guys did back in the days. I'm not going to call y'all a bunch of bus drivers, cops, and whatever, but a lot of you guys back in the 70s and 80s, basketball wasn't the main focus, so y'all, y'all didn't train off-season like these guys do. Y'all didn't practice. So the Knicks don't need to be double-teaming all the time. That's the only thing I got to say about Clyde the Fly. Clyde the Fly. Clyde Frazier. I always about to say Clyde the Glide. I used to be a Portland um, Trailblazer fan, not over the New York Knicks. Everybody have a secondary team, and Clyde the Glide, Clyde the Glide, 
was one of my Clyde Drexler was one of my favorite players. That's that's not even to say that I was a Portland fan, but I was a Clyde Drexler fan. Fan, yes, indeed. Let's get over to um the Indiana Pacers and the t- top leaders of the team for the New York Knicks and the Pacers. We have Brunson at the assist. We have Julius Randle leading the way with 22 points a game. But we have Tyrese Halliburton for the Indiana Pacers at 19 a game. Like this is a game the New York Knicks can win because. Tyler Burton is, is their leading scorer with 19 points a game. I ain't checked the rest of their stats, so I would I might get to it. I'm be honest with you. But just think about the New York Knicks. Uh our big three, RJ Barrett's Adams somewhere, 19 points a game. Julius, I mean Julius Randle, 22, 21 points a game. It, uh, it fluctuates. Jalen Bronson around 20 points a game. That's almost six, that's 60 points to be exact, right there. I don't think um Indiana can match our scoring. But there's one thing that Indiana do, in my opinion, have a uh, advantage on the New York Knicks, and that's scoring center. I know Tice is going to be out, but they still have Miles Turner. Miles Turner is a big that can go out and stretch the floor. Um, this is why I'm going to talk about the matchup, and y'all let me know what y'all think about it in the comment section. Now, we all know Mitchell, Mitchell Robinson is going to start, and I have no problem with that. But Sometimes I think when Mitchell Robinson is playing certain centers, centers that can step out and hit that three, like like Miles Turner, like Vukic could do. You see him in the Chicago game. Mitchell Robinson wasn't out there. Hartenstein, sometimes he can play the perimeter. Sometimes he's not that good. But Jericho Sims, even coming out of college, watching this guy, this guy can actually guard. If you want, he can guard four different positions. If he has to, he can guard, guard all five positions. He can guard from the shooting guard up to the center. He's mobile. He's athletic. And he's really bouncy around the rim. And that's what we need in a rim protector. Um, he's not afraid to go out and contest shots because he know he's he's athletic enough to get back and block shots or even contest shots. And I'm not going to lie. I can't wait for the day that this kid get to start. I know that's a long time coming, but who knows? It might be next year. Who knows? We have Art Isaiah Hartenstein here for two or another year, two years, two-year deal, $8 million, That's $16 million. Um. We just resigned Mitchell Robinson, but Mitchell Robinson have a tendency of getting hurt. He may not play a full season. This is why I say we can bring in Sims, and not even, not even if Mitchell Robinson is not hurt or Jericho, excuse me, um, I, Isaiah Hartenstein, bring him off the bench. But I would just like to see Jericho Sims start against centers that like to go out on the perimeter and hit that three or take the eighteen foot jumper. Uh, Mitchell Robinson don't contest it, and most of the time when he do contest it, he get out there late and it wind up being a foul. I like Jericho Sims, and I like our young core. But this game right here, the um, Indiana Pacers, they come in, like I said, 15 and 15. Um, they're actually 10 and 7 against the Eastern Conference teams. The New York Knicks is what? 11 and 6 against the Eastern Conference. Um, this, Like I said, this is a game that the New York Knicks should win. But, you know, you can never count your chickens before the eggs hatch. So what we're going to see is what can the Knicks do bring. And this is why I should have put up when I was talking about that Jericho Sims things right here. I should have put this up real quick. I'm just going to leave it there for a few seconds so y'all can just get a a, a, a a glance or an idea of what I'm talking about. I think Sims can go out there. I'm not saying start Sims. I'm saying let Mitchell Robinson start. And if turn up Miles Turner start hitting them jumpers or threes, then bring Sims in or even um Isaiah Hartenstein. And we can, because the way the Knicks is playing right now, I'm going to be honest with you. My opinion, we look unbeatable. If we continue to play the way we play, I know Julius Randle in the last three games, with the last game we just played, he had 19 points. Before that, he dropped 30 points. And why I say invincible, when Julius Randle is sharing the ball and not making the mistakes that he's making, and um, our floor general, Brunson, is out there doing what he's supposed to do, and R.J. Barrett having a good game, this is an unstoppable team because our defense – the first unit that start is is okay, but our second unit is second unit is a hell of a defensive squad. Like I said, um, Sims is one part of that, but he's not really on the floor that much. But when you when you see him on the floor, the defense really excel excels. Um, I'm wondering what this is going to look like with Obi Toppin come back because a few times against Chicago, we seen Isaiah Hartenstein and we seen Jericho on the floor, which it. The defense was even better with them two guys on the floor. I know Isaiah Hartenstein be a little overzealous sometimes and make some boneheaded fouls, but he plays defense. He moves his feet. He's not afraid to contest shots. He's just mobile and he's just active. He's bringing energy. Um, Jericho Sims is a beast. 
let's be honest, is a beast. And like this whole game, Indiana pace of game is going to. I'm not going to say it's going to rely on our bench because we know our stars going to go out. Our starters going to go out there and get the points necessary. But it's our bench that keep the lead. It's our bench that push the lead. It's our bench that take the other teams out the game sometimes. I mean that defense, like the Chicago game. I, I'm gonna say Isaiah. Emmanuel quickly had a bad game off shooting. I think he only had. I didn't go. I ain't going back to that. I know it was like almost in the fourth quarter before he hit his first shot, but he still played good defense. But that unit with R.J. Barrett, um, Emmanuel quickly. We had Miles McBride, um, Jericho Sims, and Isaiah Hartenstein. That defense was crazy, and I think it's going to give other teams mad problems. Um, we got Golden State up next. Steph Curry is going to be out. I'm not going to say that's going to be an easy victory, but that should be somewhat a victory we could look forward to. I'm not going to say count on, but look forward to. Um, the Knicks, I mean, I don't know the last time the Knicks went on a 10-game winning streak. I should have looked all that up, but I'm 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 impatient. I'm I'm worrying about my Jets game. Let me be honest with you. I already watched that Jets game. Zach Wilson is getting the start. Mike um, White wasn't cleared to play, so we're going to see how that turned out. That's for all my Jets fan lovers. I know y'all are Knicks fans, but if y'all like the Jets and the Knicks, let's go, baby. Y'all y'all we there, we there. I'm not, I mean, I, I don't hate on no New York team. Trust me. But my three favorite teams are the Yankees, Jets, and the New York Knicks. Everybody else is just little brothers, Mets, Nets, <laughs> and the Giants. I know the Giants have Super Bowls when the New York Jets don't have, but we have one Super Bowl win in the history. But back to this game. The Pacers have gone 10 and 7 against the Eastern Conference, like I said, but I don't see them, I don't, I don't see them beating the New York Knicks at all. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't see it happening. No way capping. I don't. Not with Bronson, not with the New York Knicks is playing, especially in that second quarter of the last game of that Chicago game. The New York Knicks really looked it like, like I said, unstoppable. It looked like they look like a team that if we continue to play this way, we're gonna be a hard out. And need I, need I, I don't <laughs> I don't want to sound crazy, but I'm I think this team could go to the Eastern Conference finals. That's just my opinion. I think if we continue to play this way, um, like I said, I don't know what's going to happen with Topman come back because I'm not going to want to mess with nothing. Can we make a 10-man game, ten man rotation? We don't need it. Um, what can I say? Right now, Tibbs got the team moving. The defense is uh, The offense is right there. Everything is popping. Everything is popping. Let's be honest. Everything is popping for the New York Knicks right now. We don't really need to change anything. I don't want to change nothing. I want the New York Knicks to keep playing the basketball that they're playing right now. Um, I want Tibbs to give my man Miles McBride more minutes. I, I would like to see Miles McBride start one game. That's only if Jalen Bronson is hurt. Because we already know we got our point guard of the future in Jalen Bronson. Um, the Knicks is looking good. There's nothing really bad I could say about these last six, seven games. Um, the defense been right there. We start out slow, but our offense, and we have to give a lot of thanks. I mean, a lot of big up to my man Julius Randle. I know a lot of y'all want him traded. I did last year, but this guy's doing what he's supposed to do. Um, the Knicks is going to take this game, and then I predict the way, because let's face it, Golden State is not, a powerhouse like they was last year. They actually started off one one of the worst teams in um the West. Um, we'll leave that for the Fakers. The Fakers are making progress. That's Lakers, if you don't understand. But um, this is a winnable game. So if the Knicks take this game, we can go on a, and take the take that that Golden State game. That can be an eight game winning streak. Um, we got a couple of games up and it's coming up. We got Chicago coming back again next Friday. Um, I don't know. I, uh, it's going to be hard to beat a team straight, three straight games. But we'll see. The New York Knicks, I think they're up to the task. And if we happen to lose to either Indiana or Golden State, I think we're going to come back and take that out on Chicago. The New York Knicks is looking really good right now. And, you know, like, we just been hearing people talking about trade this guy. We still hearing people talking about make this trade, make that trade. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think a lot of people that cover the Knicks, um, that I ain't gonna say watch the Knicks, but I'm talking about report on the Knicks. I don't think they're Knicks fans, and I think they just want to sabotage my team. Cause why would we go out and make trades? 
I don't mean we don't even have to we don't have to get rid of Cam Reddish. We don't have to get rid of Derrick Rose. Some of these Cam Reddish are expiring contract. We can save that if you don't want to resign with that's money off our books. We don't need nothing. We don't. If we're going to get anything, let's get it in the draft. Let's get some homegrown players. Let's get a real good shooter to compliment Grimes when he's got to go down. We can bring somebody back off the bench that can, and like, I ain't mean to just jump off subject, but y'all heard me say it many times, this kid's going to be the next Klay Thompson. Well, you're going to hear me say something different. He's going to be better than Klay Thompson. And why I say that? Because his defense is better than Klay Thompson. Once he start hitting that three-point shot on a regular, get his percentage up, which he did in the last game, making five out of six, like, this kid's going to be better than Klay Thompson. I'm letting you know right now. You heard it right here. Call me crazy. Call me delusional. Whatever you call me, make sure you call me that in the comment section. But don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And like I said, leave it in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? The New York Knicks is about to go on a 10-game winning streak. That's just how I feel. Um, the New York Knicks, like I said, with this team, with this team, I'm telling you, with this team, we can make the Eastern Conference final. Y'all think I'm bull crapping? I ain't going to curse. I don't really like curse. Y'all think I'm bull crapping? I'm telling you right now, the way we're playing right now, the way we're gelling, we're only going to get better. That's just my opinion. Let me know what y'all think in the comments section. And with that being said, I want everybody to stay safe, stay healthy. God bless and peace.